game nights. How long do you want people to stay for? Do you want them just to have a one night stay, a two night stay? Do you want to try and get people to stay for a week? In this video, we're going to talk everything minimum night related, how you can set smart minimum nights, how you can make sure that your guests stay for longer, and what to do with orphan nights that you can't fill. A question I get asked a lot is what should I set my minimum nights to? So why set minimum nights at all? Why not just set it at one and be done with it? Well, we've worked out that it physically costs us about £40 for a guest to come and stay, whether they come for one night or whether they come for three, four nights. Because we only have to do the laundry once, the bedding once, the cleaning once, the chocolate brownies once. So actually, it's brilliant for us if people stay for longer. That's why we've set our minimum nights to two. If we were to set it to three, then we would struggle with the weekends because people need to be back home for Monday morning to get the kids to school. So we find that people want to be leaving on a Sunday and not a Monday and therefore they're probably not going to book it if they have to pay for three nights. Over the school holidays we're much more likely to get three nights in and so I could take it to that but I'm also not wanting to um, upset our customers. So two is perfectly fine. But now we're finding that we're really struggling to fill the midweeks. So I'm now thinking of dropping it to a one night minimum over the shoulder season in the midweeks. We tried it out in July. We did a week of taster, of one night tasters, just before the school holidays. And actually we filled it way more than I thought we were going to. And although it was a lot more work, we, there, we did actually increase our revenue because we probably would have been empty that week, but we actually had quite a lot of one night stays. I also want to take our friends at Essex Glamping as a brilliant example of how one night stays can work perfectly. They have a one night minimum, they are safari lodges and they don't provide any bed linen and I think this is a massive plus point if you're going to do one night stays is maybe do an option of no bedding because this means the cleaning is much quicker, you don't have all that laundry and the cost of all the bedding. They mostly get booked up with one night stays but it also means they're getting a huge volume of people through all who are sharing on their social media, all who are telling their friends where they've been and stayed and, and that definitely encourages more bookings. So I think it, there's something to be said for the more volume of people you can get through, the more the word gets spread out about your glamping or short-term rental site. Then let's go to the other side and take Centre Parks as another example. They are a huge company, Europe-wide, and they have really rigid set check-in days. So you can only check in on a Friday, check out on a Monday for three nights, or check in on a Monday and check out on a Friday for four nights in the midweek. So they're so strict on that, and it works really well for them because they've got a huge social media following, they're a big business, they're always full, so if you're in that incredible situation you can set your minimum nights to whatever you want to but I think for us and for our kind of short-term rent to small or glamping sites two nights is great so I've always thought right well we do two nights that means I have to do two nights all the time across the whole season actually I've just discovered that I have the tech in my hands to change the minimum nights to whatever I want it to be so we are now, for September and October, for the rest of the season, we're going to one night during the midweeks and two nights at weekends. And before, I couldn't fathom how to do it. But let's go down to my office and I'm going to show you exactly how I'm going to set it so that we can optimise our revenue. So here I am in the office, let me show you what I've done to sort out our minimum nights. I've gone into the ResNexus back office and I'm going into settings and into minimum nights. So firstly, you want to set the default minimum to one night. Then I've put all the weekends left for the season as a two night minimum, so then the rest will be a one night. But then I've also just set repeating minimum nights for next year to make sure that people can't book a one night minimum for next year because I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. The other thing I wanted to touch on was all for nights. So you can see here I've got a few random one nighters that can't possibly be booked. So what I can do is release those and set those ones as a one night minimum, which then also talks to Airbnb so that they end up getting booked if I'm feeling brave enough to take on a one night minimum in the school holidays. The other thing I've done is approach the people, so let's take this person, approach the people to say, would you like to take that night before at a discounted rate? And that's worked quite well in a few occasions. So that's a super quick rundown of minimum nights and the way you can set it up in ResNexus. If you have any questions then please let me know and also please let us know in the comments what you set your minimum night to. Are you finding at the moment you're having to drop it down to one night minimum where you've always done two like we are? We'd really love to know that we're not alone. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hopefully we will see you again on the next video.